Torpedo Dell, as the little slide says up there, um, I had actually you know, spent four years in the Army a long time ago, um, way, way back when, peacetime, so I, I never had to, uh, I was waiting for the Soviets to come through the full the gap, as opposed to uh, Afghanistan or Iraq. But uh, luckily it never happened. So, But I, I do a bunch of consulting, do a lot of cybersecurity work, and a whole number of other things. I just wrote a new book on cybersecurity. Um, and remind me, I got a copy for you. Okay. So, um, but mostly, I do all that just to pay for my fly fishing habit. So that's what I'm going to talk about. And uh, so this is just properly disclaimed. So, you know, fly fishing can be highly addictive, you know, break up your marriage, put too many miles on your truck, a whole bunch of other things. But it's all worth it in the end. So, well worth uh, all the effort. And uh, we'll talk a lot about that. So, and I'll talk about a lot of different fly fishing. And look, there's only three of us. So, if you have questions, I'm happy to deviate any direction you want to go. Um, and and I, I still a lot of other fishing besides fly fishing as well. So I have all kinds of, of stories. But um, you know, most of the fly fishing, I'll talk a lot about you know different kinds of fly fishing. I mean, this is one that everybody, you know, when you think about the river runs through it, that's what everybody thinks about, right? You're standing out in the river, and you're fly casting, and there's bugs flying all over, and you land the thing, and a big trout grabs it, and yeehaw, right? So it's great. But there's lots of other fly fishing. This is probably, you know, if you talk about some of the most exciting fly fishing, if you ever go down to Florida Keys in May, June, July, and you start looking at a 100-pound tarpon on a fly rod, it is unbelievable. You just can't imagine what it is. I had a 100-pound tarpon on for about 20 minutes, and, uh, and he got away. And I may even have a picture of it later where there's just the lines laying there in the water. So you How want you doing? To go, you want to go to Belize, let's go. Yeah. I'm done yep. with some bone fishing. Yep. Yep, I've done a lot of bone fishing. So, you know, nice mountain lakes up in Colorado, and then bone fish on the saltwater flats. So that, that you know, that's about a six, seven pound bone fish. Um, and the bone fish are all over. I mean, they're in the Caribbean, they're in the, uh, in the Pacific, you can go all the way to the Seychelles Islands over in, in Africa and catch bone fish. You know, just great fish. And they're like the speediest thing on the, on the flats. You catch one and they literally can be gone 100 yards in a few seconds, and you're standing there wondering what happened. And then, uh, and then that's that's the big the big game fishing, right? You know, mainly catch. It's not like tarpon we catch seven or eight in a day, but you know, catch one marlin or one sailfish on a fly rod. They're really pretty amazing uh, stuff. That's Belize and and all the whole the whole, you know whole South America. And uh, and then that's a fish that we landed up in the Deschutes River up in Oregon this year. So that was about a 14 pound native steelhead. I didn't catch that. I, I took a friend of mine up. I have probably caught 70 or 80 steelhead up on the Deschutes over the years. I lived up there for about eight years and tried to go back every year. But I took a friend of mine who's a beginning fly fisherman and he's gone two or three times with me. And you know, he's got a few, he caught a few small trout. And then finally, the last afternoon when we were up there, he's like, wow, he goes, I think I got something. And then this thing jumped out of the water. And it's like, oh my God. You really do have something, and and miraculously landed it. I mean, you know, because he he, um, he he was pretty new. He never hooked anything this big, and uh, it was it took about 20 minutes, 25 minutes to get it in. But man, it was well worth. Uh, this is a native steelhead, so you can see the uh, there's a thin depth here. But this was a hatchery fish. The coloring would be a lot weaker, and and that fin would be gone. They clip them in the hatchery, so he. Uh, but he caught them. We were using two flies, so we were probably using <coughs> probably using a, a big nymph like this as the header fly, and then a little tiny, um, you know, probably a little tiny nymph like this as a second fly on the back. So two flies tied in parallel, and he grabbed a little fly on the back, and uh, luckily he stayed stayed stopped here. He got him in. Andy was a happy camper. And since he's a major investor in my company, it helped me too. <laughs> so, and then, you know, then if you get down to Florida, you know, Florida's got great bass fishing. You know, Lake Okeechobee, there's got to be 10,000 lakes down here. You just got fish in any canal, and there's bass everywhere. The, um, the other big bass spot I went to was the Amazon. So I spent a week down the Amazon River fishing for peacock bass, which we eat these. That's probably an eight, 10 pound largemouth. We actually caught, I actually caught. I think 227 fish over five days, and uh, the biggest one was 19 and a half pounds. 
So I mean, you know, this big, and and literally, I had scars across my fingers from them just ripping, just ripping the line off. You had these 15 pound tests to keep them out of the uh, the trees and stuff. I mean, it was incredible. We we fished out of a little. Uh, we had a big boat, and then we had uh, four houseboats with two of us that slept in each one. And every couple of days, they moved camp to another part of the river. And we were we were on a tributary, a tributary of the Amazon, and it was still bigger than the Potomac. And just to give you an idea, the the, the, the uh, depth of the water between the high season and the low season was a 23 foot change. So if you think about uh, think about a, a telephone pole. At the high high water, the telephone pole would be completely covered, and at low, the telephone pole would be completely out of the water. That's how much the water moved in the uh, you know in the Amazon in, in this particular stretch. And when the when the water went down, the fish got super concentrated and super aggressive. Caught a lot of piranhas as well while we were down there. So that was just the bass that we caught. And then you know if you go out to the Shenandoah, which we were just talking about. All you need is a little dry fly, and you just get these amazing little, you know, brook trout, golden trout, cutthroat trout. Great, uh, you know, great looking stuff. And so, and then we've got we've got an event coming up on April 25th through fishingcommunity.org at Fletcher's Boathouse. And if you haven't been to Fletcher's Boathouse, it's right in Georgetown. So if you go down Canal Road, um, it's a it's a boathouse that's been around. I think it's, I think it's, the boathouse has been around for a couple hundred years. They've been continuously renting rowboats um, there for uh, for the last 100 years, 125 years. And so you can go there, you can literally rent a rowboat for 25 bucks for the day, row out about 75 yards into the Potomac, and uh, on a good day, there you'll catch somewhere between 30 and 50, 50 shad in about a four or six hour period. And that's whether you're fly fishing, whether you're spin fishing, I mean, it is amazing. And I've got some pictures of it. Well, this is, a, this is an American shad right here. So there's two kinds of shad, three actually, little, little crappy gizzard shad that you don't want to catch. But there's hickory shad, which are really plentiful, and then go somewhere between two and three pounds. And then there's these American shad, which go somewhere between four and seven pounds. So really, you know, both fish are in there, you, you can catch both. And then the nice thing is, what, what follows the shad upstream, and this is all in April and May, so it's literally right now, we just caught the first shad about a week ago, despite the terrible conditions. Um, the stripers follow the shad upriver. So you also got 40, 50 pound stripers in Fletcher's boathouse that you can hook up at the same time. You know, you typically need to use a different, you need a different lure. You know, for the shad, I don't know if I have a shad, a shad or a shad fly. But you just use a little, you know, like a little multicolored, you know, even a bonefish fly will work for the shad. You typically fish two of them, one behind the other. But last year I caught three striped bass. You know, one was 22 inches, one was 24 inches, and uh, you know, one was I didn't want to measure. But um, you know, they just grabbed the shad fly. But then, <coughs> then I started fishing a big fly on the front, and a little fly in the back, and I was catching a striper and then shad on the little fly. So it's just the water's really deep. So if you're if you're fly fishing, you have to use a really heavy sinking line. You, know, you cast across the current. You let it swing down. You let it sink, and then you start tripping back about six inches at a time. But on a good day, as soon as you get, if you get the boat in the right spot, literally every cast you're gonna get, you know, hits or a hook of fish. So it really is one of the- You one still tie up about a nine foot leader? I mean, yeah, you know, he, he, you don't need one that long. You could probably go with a five foot, five. and they wouldn't care. Are you doing what, more, less than two, four X? I mean, how I usually how use um, eight or 10 pound yeah. mono. <laughs> I don't even use a tapered leader. I yeah, just tie yeah. on some tippet. Well, and that's you know that's why I was wondering you know building your own. Yep. How far down you go and what size? Yep. You yeah, and you, 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 I, I fished as short as, as five feet of line on a leader, yeah. and that's they don't care. They, they used to, they're hitting. They don't eat. Yeah. Um, you know they're coming up with they, 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 the shad run is amazing. They, they used to you know back with George, if you go down to Mount Vernon and you do the tour, they'll show you where George Washington stopped everything in Mount Vernon for about four weeks, and they, they caught like 200,000 shad and used them for fertilizer, they smoked them, you know, they did all this, I mean, it was an amazing event, right? And, uh, and then in the, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s here, the pollution just about killed them, and they've been rebuilding them ever since. And now we're getting hundreds of thousands of fish up, up the Potomac. And uh, in fact, at our event, we're gonna have one of the, uh, one of the guys from the, uh, the Virginia restocking program. So what they do, 
is they go out at night with a net. They'll net them and then squeeze them, take the take the row and then and, and fertilize it, and then ship them off to the hatchery. And they're using they're using the Potomac fish to rebuild all the stocks oh, wow. in the Delaware, the Potomac, the Rappahannock, um, all these different rivers. So this this is really an amazing. You know, you, if you can't make this event, and, and you know, we'll be out there for the whole day. Um, if you can't make this event, get, just get out there on a weekend. I mean, you rent boats. You typically got to get there fairly early, or wait until somebody you know gives up. They only have about 25 boats, but they're big row boats. They hold three people, and uh, you know, these big rocks as anchors. I mean, they're really, it's really a nice. Uh, it's a nice place. I, mean, I think it was been Friday afternoon here, um, so. And then, and then, so the, and these are some of the different kind of flies. So, you know, when we talk about fly fishing, again, the classic is you drop this little tiny fly on the water and the fish comes up, he grabs it, and away you go. Yeah, it's all great. There's lots of different ways to fish. I mean, these are great dry flies, you know, pretty classic ones. Um, you know, bass on a fly rod is fantastic. Snakeheads are unbelievable on a fly rod. If you can get them to bite, I mean, they're pretty spooky fish. But if you can get one on a fly rod, it's, it's an amazing, you know, amazing fighter. Um, you know, bonefish, peacock bass, um, all kinds of other stuff there on, the, on things. But most of the fish you're going to catch are below the surface, right? It's great to fish on top of the water. It's exciting to see them hit. But the reality is, you know, if you're out trout fishing, you know, say you go to the Bighorn River, right? I, I fished out there several times out, out in Montana, and it's it's literally feels like a trout farm. You go out there, you catch 50, 60 fish in a day, and you catch them on these little tiny uh, mints. And the way you fish them is you typically, um, you see a little pink ball? Oh, here. So you typically tie a, um, an indicator at the right where your fly line meets the, uh, the leader, and, uh, and then you drop your flies down about eight or nine feet, two of them. Little, real small, a couple split shot, and you're and you're, so you're casting and you're just watching this. And when it goes down or jiggles, it's typically a fish grabbing. And on the bighorn, all they eat is little bugs. It's the only thing in the river, and so that you're eating all day long. So the fish are just constantly grabbing these these little tiny flies. Um, if you're old, it could be a real challenge to tie on. So usually got a guy that he does it. And then and then you know then this is another different different completely kind of fishing. So it's streamer fishing. So you know, again, you go down. I went down to Florida in uh, in Mexico Beach in uh, in uh, for Thanksgiving, and I, I just used you know a little fly like this, right? And and a sinking line. So I, I had a I had a, a inflatable kayak. I found this little inlet. I paddled out. You know, cast it out 30, 40 feet. Let the thing sink for 15 seconds and start tripping it back. And there were fish everywhere. And you just never knew what you were going to get. I mean, I got sea trout, ladyfish, which is a, a little tarpon family fish that can go up to 26, 28 inches. Uh, it jumps like crazy, and they jump all over the place. Uh, bluefish, mackerel, um, yeah, probably, probably three or four other different species, and, and, sea, and sea trout. And you just, you just never knew what was going to be on the end of the line. It was all cast and strip with, uh, with streamers. So. Uh, and then, you know, this is kind of what's going on around Virginia. So Virginia is not known as a great fly fishing place or a great fishing state, but it really is a tremendous amount of stuff here, right? You can fish the saltwater in Chesapeake Bay, you can fish the mountain streams, you can fish the Potomac, um, you know, really a big selection of uh, stuff. Um, I actually went down and fished the pylons under the uh, Chesapeake Bay Bridge with a guy. And, uh, and we, 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 I fly fished for about half the time. But the, but the water was moving so fast and it was so bumpy that we ended up using spinning gear. But we, we caught, uh, you know, just striped bass, you know, anywhere from you know, 22 to 30 inches um, all day long. I mean, really nice, amazing down there. And you get, you get in some cases, you get 40, 50 pound drum, which are, you know, redfish, black drum, red, red drum, and, uh, and tarpon show up down there also. So you get a huge variety of stuff. And uh, down there at the uh, at the, at the, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, and uh, and then out if you get out on the Atlantic, a lot of other stuff, and uh, you know there's always something going, no matter how cold it is, no matter how um, how bad the weather is, there's always some place you can go fishing. 